Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm just gonna give it maybe another minute here as people filter into the Zoom room. I realized that not everyone can hop in right at noon. So like I said, I'll maybe give it another 45 seconds and then we will go ahead and get started. Um, but I do appreciate you being on the call. We know that Zoom fatigue is very real. Um, this is gonna be a very interesting topic for any of you trying to sell your product online. Alibaba is such a cool platform to be on. Um, so we do really look forward to having our guest speaker talk a little bit more about that. If you have questions already in your mind that you're thinking this is something I definitely want to get answered today, please feel free to put that in the chat, get us started, or just say hi, let us know what your product is or what you're looking forward to in the presentation. Um, you can make this as engaging as you want to do and want it to be. You know, if you just want to sit here and listen, that's fine. But we do like to try to keep this engaging as we prolong this virtual world, right? Having that human contact is a is a little difficult. So if you want to say hi, I will definitely have a conversation with you. Um, otherwise, we will just sit here for another 20-ish seconds and then we will kick it off. All right, I'm gonna get started with my introductions. So once again, welcome, good afternoon, happy Wednesday. We will be discussing how you can use Alibaba for your business today, which is, a, like I said before, a very unique topic, one that I think you'll all find a lot of value in. Um, Juan has started us off in the chat with something that he's interested in learning about today, that's great. Uh, so yes, please do feel free throughout this presentation to engage, put questions, put things you'd like to learn more about, and we will get to them in the presentation. This is offered today by Temple SBDC. And if you are new to the SBDC, we are part of a nationally accredited network of centers that work to help small businesses at absolutely no cost. So we are offering this webinar at no cost to you as a small business owner today. And the sole purpose is to help you learn more about what's out there. How can you sell your product? How can you grow your business? Um, this is part of our manufacturing series. It's the last in a 10 part manufacturing series. And we uh, have run this twice already. So I'm very happy to have Kate with us again as we talk a little bit more about Alibaba for your business. Um, this is set up as a Zoom webinar, so you cannot accidentally turn your video on. You cannot unmute yourself. So that is why I did say earlier, if you want to engage, you have the capability, please utilize the Q&A or chat. Um, but you cannot accidentally turn your video on or um, unmute yourself in this session. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Kate after this to learn more about Alibaba for your specific situation, we do offer one-on-one -on -one office hours that will be starting at 1 p.m. today. And then you do have the option to unmute yourself and have a conversation with her. And I'll bring that up at the end of the session as well. This is being recorded. You'll receive a copy of the PowerPoint and a link to the recording and a follow-up email within one to two business days. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and let our guest speaker, Kate Anderson, introduce herself. Hi, Sarah. Uh, thanks for having me. Excited to be here to, to um, help your under audience understand a little bit more about Alibaba.com, the marketplace, and how it can be used to um, grow uh, and digitize your business. So I guess I'll start by sharing my screen. Um, can you see my screen, my PowerPoint presentation? Nope, can't see it. Oh, wait, <laughs> share a button. There we go. Perfect. Slideshow. So today I'll be covering how Alibaba.com is helping US manufacturers digitize and, finding, and find new customers. Uh, and a little bit towards the end, I'm going to discuss um, more of sourcing on the platform and how um, you can do that um, and some of the new products and services that we've introduced to make sourcing on the platform even easier. Um, so my name is Kate Anderson. I have been with Alibaba.com uh, close to three years now, uh, and my job is to really um, build awareness um, of the platform in the United States. Uh, to help us position us as an essential ally to US uh, small businesses. Um, prior to my work at Alibaba.com, I have done a lot of B2B 
SaaS marketing, software as a service uh, for companies like LogMeIn, uh, Trustpilot. Um, this is really my first uh, experience with a global e-commerce platform. Uh, and it's been a really interesting learning experience. Uh, my background here is um, our office uh, headquartered in Hangzhou, China. Um, so that's, I have been there many times, uh, not recently, uh, but sort of that's um, our home, our headquarters in Hangzhou, China uh, on the other side of the world. Um, so Alibaba.com. So a lot of folks, when I ask about what do you know about Alibaba.com, uh, a lot of times people conflate it with Alibaba Group uh, and Jack Ma and the Amazon of China. And while all of those things are essentially true, Alibaba.com is actually one small business unit in the overall Alibaba Group. But interestingly enough, it is the oldest business unit been around over 20 years since 1999. Uh, and it was Jack Ma's original vision uh, when he uh, founded uh, the huge company that it is now. Uh, it was Alibaba.com. Um, and he had originally intended it to be um, sort of a listing service, think a Craigslist for Chinese manufacturers to be discovered by the rest of the world. So you could go on there, find a manufacturers that could make whatever it is you were looking for, you would message them offline uh, and continue that relationship offline. In the past several years, we've really introduced a lot of solutions to make it um, more of an end-to-end -end digital trading platform. So um, things like payment protection, so you can transact safely on the platform. Um, plugging in logistics provider. So you can uh, buy something and then figure out exactly how to get it to your warehouse and how much that will cost. Um, we've done things like financing uh, and, and payment terms. Um, so really making it stickier uh, and making folks um, really stay on the platform to um, complete every piece of their um, global trade uh, transactions. Uh, and I'll go into to more in depth a little bit. Uh, the second thing I kind of wanted to demystify, in addition to what Alibaba.com is, um, is sort of the idea of e-commerce. Um, I think uh, until recently, uh, you know, pre-COVID-19, people really thought of e-commerce as a B2C channel. So you, you go on Amazon, you put something in your shopping cart, you, you pay for it, you check out, and away we go. Um, but actually, um, e-commerce the B2B e-commerce opportunity is six times that of B2C, which a lot of people don't are, are you know, shocked to find out. It's actually a $23.9 trillion uh, market size for global B2B e-commerce. Um, and Alibaba.com can help you, uh, can help lower the barriers to entry into this, this market uh, and really help you um, become part of this, this opportunity. Um, just by way of um, some data and some surveys that we've done, um, we did this uh, survey last September to sort of gauge how US small businesses uh, were doing, you know, nine months into the pandemic. Um, and while, you know, I think most of it is still true, that's why I'm um, sharing this data with you. So we surveyed 5,000 US B2B SMBs to, you know, gauge their levels of, um, Digitization, uh, how online were they? Uh, and globalization, were they transacting uh, with, were they sourcing or selling um, with uh, international trading partners? Um, so the, the, the uh, results were, were pretty interesting. Um, we found that 93% um, of B2B businesses uh, last year reported doing some sort of online uh, trade, which, which was pretty interesting. Um, and that 80% uh, maintained or grew those online B2B transactions in the past six months. Um, with respect to globalization, uh, we found that 63% of the businesses that responded um, cited reaching international uh, markets as a goal. Uh, and we think a lot of this is due to some of the supply chain disruptions. Uh, so looking at different markets and different suppliers to sort of shore up uh, one supply chain. Uh, we think is really the impetus behind that. Uh, and I think what is particularly interesting to this audience, we dug down into specific industries and how specific industries were, were globalizing uh, and digitizing. 
And we found that US small manufacturers were digitizing at twice the rate of other industries during the pandemic, uh, which is quite inter in interesting. Uh, if we think of manufacturing, B2B manufacturing is, uh, you know, more of a traditional analog business, uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic really accelerated um, their digitization journey. Um, and that, you know, to do that, they're investing more uh, and their investment in these technologies is outpacing that of other industries. Uh, and they're seeing more upside uh, to that growth and, um, you know, really optimistic about what um, digitization can do for them. So late last year in response to um, sort of these trends that we uncovered in the survey, um, we developed a program called the Alibaba.com Digitization Sprint for US manufacturers. Uh, and we brought together um, a series of speakers to talk about um, how manufacturers can get started with e-commerce. I think a lot of the speakers are many of the same um, that were part of this uh, manufacturing series. So Kurt Anderson, No Relation, um, Brian Beck, uh, Allison DeFord, we had all of them come uh, and we had about 150 participants and we had um, lots of interactive um, Q and A's, office hours, sort of the same thing you're doing here. Uh, and it was really exciting to see so uh, many businesses see the opportunity uh, in digitizing and um, seeing as, as a potential pivot to, to help them through some of the COVID-19 disruptions and slowdowns. Um, so here's the URL, the, the curriculum is now open for anyone that wants to take advantage um, and get access to some of the resources uh, that we collected uh, and they're all here. Um, so please visit that URL to, to check it out. Um, what I was mentioning how um, we've really digitized the platform over the past several years um, and made it easier to, to stay on the platform and do business on the platform. Here are some of the solutions that, that I was mentioning. Um, so, you know, you can sign up for Alibaba.com and turnkey set up a storefront where folks can find you uh, when they're looking for particular products. Um, we've introduced keyword advertising. So there's marketing services built in to get greater visibility on the platform. Communication tools. So how do you communicate with um, a buyer or a seller that does not speak the same language as you do? Uh, we have real-time translation. Uh, requests for quotation. So uh, if I'm looking to find a supplier, I can just put out a um, request for quotation and I can get multiple responses for that and then more easily uh, identify one that I would like to work with. Um, payment and order protection, which I'll go into, uh, and logistics, which um, is a very hot topic these days. Uh, Juan, I saw your question about shipping containers. So I'll talk a little bit about some of the solutions we have that you can plug into on the platform. Here's just some, you know, talking about Alibaba.com um, as a marketplace, um, you know, buy, sell, uh, global buy, global sell. Um, you know, I, when I, you know, three years ago first started was kind of astounded by the, the size um, of the platform and the reach. So um, we have 160,000 plus global suppliers. Um, so while we, when we started in 1999, most of our supply was Chinese, um, we've really expanded that footprint. Um, we have US suppliers, we have suppliers in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Vietnam, um, in Europe, in Italy, uh, in Turkey, Pakistan. So we've really expanded the capabilities uh, or the, 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 the array of suppliers that are available to buyers on the platform. Again, uh, that can really help um, shore up supply chains um, when you have multiple regions and multiple suppliers that can meet your needs. We have at any given time, 10 million active buyers uh, on the platform and active buyers aren't just people browsing uh, the site, they're actually sending inquiries uh, and interacting with sellers on the platform. Um, and we cover 190 countries and regions um, and those active buyers are submitting 300,000 inquiries a day. So there's tons of communication going on between the buyers and the sellers. Um, as I mentioned, we are truly global supply. Uh, and when you think about it, certain regions specialize in particular 
um, categories. Uh, so China is very uh, strong in consumer electronics and machinery. Uh, US, uh, which I can go into a little bit more, uh, is uh, strong in food and beverage. Um, Italy, also strong in food and beverage and apparel. Uh, and Vietnam uh, is really uh, taking over the, the furniture category um, quite a bit, which is interesting. Um, so those, that's the supply side. Uh, on the demand side, um, you know, here's the top 20 countries um, by buyer distribution. Uh, and the number one country, uh, most of the buyers come from the United States. Uh, I believe it's over 30% of our buyers are from the United States. So uh, as I mentioned, it's a marketplace. So you can buy, you can sell. Um, so first I'm gonna um, dive a little bit into um, selling on the platform and uh, why folks sign up for selling on the platform. So we actually opened it up to US sellers uh, in the summer of 2019. Um, and started really actively recruiting U.S. sellers for the platform. Uh, and we found that these U.S. sellers were joining the platform to digitize their business. Again, it's a turnkey way um, to set up a storefront. We do everything for you. Uh, and the traffic, those 10 million active buyers are built in on the platform. Um, uh, the sellers are using it to grow demand. Um, so instead of them going to a trade show in Southeast Asia, they can just set up a storefront and it's basically like a global trade show open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, again, to improve their margins, uh, I don't go into what, what's selling on Alibaba, why that's a little bit different um, from, from some other platforms out there um, and access to services and support. So um, we found that our US uh, base sellers were thrilled that um, we have a U.S. team here to support uh, and get them onboarded and get them successful um, with an account management team um, and tons of resources that the U.S. team is putting out specifically uh, to help our U.S. sellers. What makes selling on Alibaba different uh, from other platforms? Uh, and it's pretty interesting. Um, we do not charge a commission. Um, so it's a membership fee, um, flat fee, um, and you, all that you sell on the platform after paying that membership fee it is yours. Um, so there's no commission, no take rate. We're built for B2B. Um, we have been around since 1999 uh, and we're, we're really built to help the negotiation between the buyer and the seller. So that means like, you're not gonna see an exact product price listed you're not going to be able to just put something in a shopping cart and check out. It's really built to um, facilitate large B2B transactions between buyers and sellers. So um, you'll see things like minimum order quantity uh, and you can message sellers and sort of negotiate on that and on samples um, and sort of just get to know these suppliers better and decide who has the capabilities um, that, that you want to work with. Um, another big advantage is that you own your customer data. Um, so you have that relationship. We're not the middleman. You own that relationship. So you can market and communicate with that customer however you see fit. Finally, um, Alibaba.com is not a retailer or a wholesaler. Um, we don't sell anything. We're a marketplace. Um, so we're never going to compete with you. We're never going to white label products that are similar to yours. Um, we are just here to facilitate uh, these transactions online. A little bit more about who is successfully selling on the platform here in the US. Um, so product category, I mentioned food and beverage, uh, sort of these categories of things where there would be a lot of demand for US based products. So food and beverage, agriculture, health and wellness, like um, supplements, cosmetics, uh, there is a ton of demand for US sellers um, on the platform um, in those categories. Um, that There are other categories that, that folks are successful, but we see it's, it's a lot of traffic to um, those kind of companies here in the US. Um, business types that are successful, typically manufacturers, wholesalers, distributors that have um, uh, that, that are experienced in B2B selling uh, and can handle the demand on the platform. 
Um, typically the businesses have over a million um, in annual revenue. And again, large enough to support um, bulk demand. Um, so if you're gonna get an order for a thousand widgets, um, you have the supply chain and the ability to, to deliver on that. Uh, business goals, uh, I think the survey said, and we find when we talk to our manufacturers, um, they're really interested in acquiring new business globally and lowering, lowering those barriers to entry, setting up a global trade show that's accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, and really digitizing their businesses. Um, very uh, traditional manufacturers uh, find this a very simple way to, to get online and start selling. Uh, businesses that aren't quite right uh, for Alibaba.com, uh, those that are more experienced with the B2C model um, and sort of those one-offs, um, as well as sort of small emerging unknown brands um, where there isn't a ton of demand. I'm gonna walk you through just some of the tools that are available for those sellers setting up a storefront on the platform. Um, you get a company profile page uh, that talks about where you're located, how many years in business, your accreditation. Uh, everyone that becomes a seller on the platform has to go through business verification. So everyone on here has been, been fully vetted um, and we, we show that to, to browsers and potential buyers. Um, they also get a storefront where they can list their products. Um, again, we set all of this up for them. No need to have engineering or coding resources. We do it for you. Um, search results. So if someone's looking for products like yours and your keywords are set up properly, you will show up in the search results. Uh, and then you can dig down and do product listings. And we have a ton of resources available to tell people to help people optimize their product listings, have the right keywords in there, have the right descriptions, have the right photographs that are going to signal trust to buyers uh, and make people want to transact with you. Um, so we can help you along that journey. We also have keyword advertising tools. Uh, so in addition to your membership fee, which sort of comes with, um, you know, a set amount of keyword advertising dollars, you can add on uh, and, and buy certain keywords for which there's demand. Um, and you can see where there are pockets of demand on the platform and really position um, your products for success. Um, we also have communication tools on the platform um, where you can converse with your buyers, keep everything, uh, it's all saved here. Um, so you can keep that line of communication open. Uh, and I mentioned the RFQ tool, uh, which is great for buyers and sellers because um, buyers can put it out there to find suppliers that can meet their requirements and, and deliver the kind of products they need. And sellers have the opportunity to go into the pool of RFQs and respond to them. Um, so that's sort of some built-in um, demand that's right there on the platform. Now, about the other side of the marketplace uh, and, and the sourcing piece, um, I can talk a little bit more about that. I think I saw a question about um, using the platform to source. Uh, so, you know, what are our 10 million global buyers on the platform? Um, why, why do they source on Alibaba.com? Um, they source to get inputs needed to produce their own manufactured and branded goods. Um, they purchase um, goods on the platform to, to resell. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this emerging new digital entrepreneur um, and online retail, uh, online retailers and how they're using the platform today. Uh, we have businesses that source um, their everyday supplies uh, that are used in their ongoing business operations. So office supplies, uh, restaurant supplies, hotels, that sort of thing. Uh, and finally, a lot of buyers go on here to, to improve their margins, to access more suppliers, um, give them a greater selection, um, and again, helping to diversify, um, diversify their supply chain. So Alibaba.com Trade Assurance is our built-in payment protection on the platform. Uh, it sort of protects buyers and sellers. Um, you can choose how to pay uh, and the payment is tracked to ensure it gets to the supplier safely um, and it gets to the, uh, the buyer is protected that they um, get what they ordered. Um, and that we do um, offer um, sort of a dispute process uh, in case anything um, is, goes wrong with the transaction. 
Um, people love this. It gives them peace of mind. Um, you know, we talk to buyers, they, particularly if it's the first time that they are transacting with a new supplier. Uh, definitely peace of mind. Suppliers love it. Um, and it works across, um, you know, U.S. to U.S. Uh, and, and China to U.S. as well. Um, we also have a freight solution that you can plug in. It's sort of Alibaba.com freight. It is uh, sort of like the kayak of um, global logistics. You can uh, instantly compare quotes uh, from 12 logistics providers. Uh, we provide end-to-end -end tracking, live updates, uh, flexible payment options, um, and allows you to stay organized with uh, some of these th third parties. Request for quotation, as I mentioned, whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're a buyer, you can put this out um, and get multiple quotes on the product that you're looking for, uh, and sellers have the ability to respond to RFQs. Um, so there's, there's tons of uh, built-in demand on the platform there. Um, Real-time real translation. Um, last I heard we have 17 languages um, that allow um, buyers and sellers to communicate with each other, which is pretty astonishing. Um, some new solutions uh, that we recently unveiled to help those that are sourcing on the platform. Um, for online retailers, we have a drop shipping pavilion. Um, so you can transact with suppliers who will send the goods directly to your consumer. Um, so this works really well for online retailers that are just getting started. They don't want to hold inventory. Um, they can work with some of the drop shipping providers that are, that are now available. Uh, if anyone has more questions about this, uh, I can point you in the right direction. Uh, we've gotten a lot of interest in this, uh, particularly um, from these new digital entrepreneurs. Um, just to give you some success stories, both on the buyer and the seller side, uh, Bra Electric is a seller on our platform. They're a California-based electrical products manufacturer, like highly customized uh, mechanical pieces for buses and other transportation um, vehicles. Um, before getting on our platform, they were doing uh, business solely domestically in the US. Uh, now that they're on Alibaba.com, they have new business inquiries from France, Malaysia, Thailand, Croatia, to name a few. They're pretty excited. They are fully ready and equipped to do business uh, globally. Um, they participated in our Global Products Expo uh, online trade show back in June, uh, and they got 100 new leads um, that they're currently um, chasing down um, from that show. Um, so it's kind of a nice success story of really a US manufacturer um, enabling global uh, business through alibaba.com. Uh, we also have a, a customer called Totally Products. Uh, they are a Florida-based uh, vitamin and supplement company. Uh, super popular. Uh, before joining uh, alibaba.com, 99% of their business uh, was solely in the US, but with Alibaba.com, they've expanded uh, quite a bit. Um, so they're up to 1.7 million in annual sales on the platform. They had to hire more people to help with um, fulfillment. Um, and Daniel's shown us pictures of his warehouse and everyone uh, working in Florida to package everything up. Uh, and he's fielding about 400 buyer inquiries uh, from international buyers each and every month. On the, the buying side, um, this is a buyer by the name of Wake 10. Casey Heim uh, is based in Kansas uh, and he really likes lake living. Uh, and he came up with an idea for a device that would create a surfable wave um, when attached to a boat uh, in the wake. Uh, and he found a trusted supplier on Alibaba.com and used Alibaba.com freight uh, to get his products to his warehouse. He now has a fully functional supply chain setup uh, that allows him to work on his next invention uh, and building his business because uh, he knows the supply chain is in good hands. Uh, he's averaging 30 to seven, 37 to 40 days door-to-door -door shipping. He's done four new product launches. Uh, I listed them here. Uh, and he's actually selling um, to uh, countries, uh, 30 different countries, buyers in 30 different countries. So 
um, pretty cool success story. So on the topic of these new online retailers, these new digital entrepreneurs, um, I think it was the National um, Bureau of Economic Research um, came out with a statistic that said, uh, and this I found to be like really made me feel pretty optimistic and positive. There were 600,000 uh, more businesses founded in 2020 than in 2019, uh, which you know you think is counterintuitive with uh, the COVID, uh, you know, peak of COVID in 2020. Lots of people started their own businesses uh, and, and took the opportunity to pivot um, and and really think about what they wanted to do. So we have 600,000 more new businesses in 2020 than we did in 2019. 200,000 of these businesses are actually retailers with no physical location. Uh, so these are online retailers, new digital entrepreneurs. Uh, so in response to that, Alibaba um, recently partnered with Hello Alice, um, who is a small business community and resource hub for entrepreneurs looking to get started with their own business uh, to have a grants program. And we're actually giving away $500,000, uh, we're giving $10,000 to 50 businesses. Um, so applications are opened. Uh, I encourage anyone in our audience to check it out. Visit alibaba.helloalice.com to learn more. Applications are open for another month uh, till October 21st. Um, and we're gonna be judging um, criteria based on um, how innovative the product is or um, how, um, compelling the go, go to market plan is. Um, so pretty exciting. Um, hopefully we're gonna help all these businesses be more successful, which we're super excited about. Um, and in companion with the grants program, uh, sort of part two of our digitization sprint for manufacturers, um, we have a digitization sprint for retailers. Um, these are additional resources to help small business businesses flourish. Um, using Alibaba.com and, and some other sort of e-commerce solutions out there. Um, we have a ton of content, so encourage everyone to check it out. Um, so I think that's about it. I um, went through this pretty quickly. Um, so I would encourage anyone that has any questions to get in touch with me directly. Um, if I can answer your question, I can put you in front of someone that, that can. Um, and if you're interested in selling on the platform uh, as a manufacturer, I encourage everyone to visit seller.alibaba.com. Great, thank you so much, Kate. Um, a lot of really great information, a lot of really great opportunities for small businesses looking to go into e-commerce or utilize Alibaba. Um, so I do want everyone to soak in what just what we just talked about here. Um, we did have three or four questions come in the chat. I just wanna make sure we touch on those really quick. Um, and like I said, this might be something that you know the answer to right now, Kate, or maybe she can help you get in touch with someone else. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to draw everyone's attention to the chat. I'm going to post a link to a survey. And this is something we do after every single one of our webinars. So for those of you that have been with us before, you know the drill at this point. Um, in order for us to continue to provide this high quality programming, we just need you to let us know how we did, what you liked, um, if there was anything you didn't like, if there were things you'd wish we had more of in the future. You know, if you were like, hey, I loved this and I want more on Alibaba, put that in the comments. Um, the survey is only four questions, so it should take less than 30 seconds of your time. And we do appreciate you um, doing that for us. Um, so someone just put in the chat, what's the membership fee for Alibaba? Um, we have two tiers um, and it depends on sort of that, uh, how much of that keyword advertising budget you want. So um, our top tier um, for more established bigger businesses uh, is, we just changed the pricing a few months ago. So it's around 10K a year, uh, but we have an entry level that's $3,500 a year. Great. Um, someone mentioned how it works to buy supplies. I think you already went over that in your presentation, correct? I did, but happy um, to follow up with Peggy if she has additional questions. We have a um, hub that has lots of information on how to source um, on the platform, and it's very simply at buyer.alibaba.com. Uh, and I encourage that uh, as sort of a starting point versus um, the site itself, which can be a little intimidating. 
um, you know, the breadth and depth of products available. Um, sometimes a little research can help you uh, sort of narrow down your search and um, figure out how to find the best suppliers for you. Great. Um, someone said, I'm interested in knowing how to calculate shipping rates for containers. Yeah, this is a super hot topic. Um, this um, cont shipping container is just, um, what's going on with them is, is crazy. Um, I believe that um, typically a shipping container costs between three and $4,000 to get um, across the ocean. Um, and now it's uh, upwards of, of 20,000. Um, super disruptive. Um, so I think a lot of people are, are asking that, that same question. Um, but again, we have Alibaba Freight, uh, which is our built-in sort of kayak for, for shipping. Uh, you can check out quotes there. Um, so I encourage you to visit ship.alibaba.com. Great. And then someone had a question about drop shipping. Would that be, um, would you also refer them to that website or is that something Alibaba uh, assists with? Um, you can visit our dropshipping pavilion at dropshipping.alibaba.com. Um, uh, you can sense a pattern here. Um, and I also, um, Carmen, um, the digitization sprint for retailers that I mentioned, um, we are going to have a ton of content around dropshipping, how to get started, um, how to make it work for your business. Um, so I encourage you to tune into that digitization sprint for retailers. Fabulous. All right. Let me see. I think I saw something. One more question here in the Q&A. Someone said, do you need insurance being a buyer? Um, I think what you can do is the trade assurance will act as um, sort of that um, escrow service um, that pr pr protects your purchase, sort of keeps it, um, keeps the money in escrow until um, the buyer gets um, what they, um, what they spec'd out with the supplier. I hope all that right. answers your question. Great, thank you so much. I think that was all the questions we had right now. So uh, as I said earlier in the presentation, we are doing office hours uh, at 1 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. So that's in about, let me see, 23-ish minutes here. If you have a question or you have a question 10 minutes from now and you're like, oh, I wish I'd asked that, join us at 1 p.m. and we can talk to Kate a little bit more and you can get some one-on-one -on -one advice on maybe what resources are available to you or what your next steps might be uh, using Alibaba for your business. So I just want to thank everyone once again for joining us today. If you have any follow-up questions that are administrative related, you can always send an email to sbdc at temple.edu. Um, otherwise, we look forward to seeing some of you at the office hours and continuing to assist you with your e-commerce journey. Once again, thank you, Kate, and everyone have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Sarah.